Hey, welcome to Clark's Place. Uh, working on the fenders, which um, I've done a little welding and and uh, things on it. But I'm going to show you kind of the modifications that are required on a 70 fender, which appears in the Janik book. Where it talks about you got to cut this piece off and then fill in the light. Well, that's exactly what I'm doing here. Um, this was already cut off and you have to of course this sticks up kind of like this one does and you have to bend it bend it down well i used clamps and i used a uh uh you know the dolly up underneath here and the hammer beat and beat and beat beat across here to get this flat and then i used a piece of metal to make sure that i'm uh pretty flat across you know that it's it's not all up and down but what i'm going to do is i also cut another strip of metal which you might be able to you might be able to see it up underneath there and also i got a magnet across the back that actually i mean it's a, it's a good idea for body parts i mean that is that's a heck of a magnet Instead of trying to hold pieces on, you can use the magnet. I'll tack it down there and then I'll and I'll pull this up and weld weld those spots. But I got it clamped. I've drilled some holes so I can plug plug weld those. And then these are the actual holes. And I can I can hit around here and all the way across. This little tab goes up. I'm not sure if I will notch this out, bend it back down, or fold it around. Not sure. I'm getting ready to do that on that. And this one over here, I've already done that. This is, of course, where the light is. You can kind of see where, where it is in there. And there was a patch up here I had to do. I did the same thing here. You might be able to see the, the new metal sticking out there a little bit. And the patch it's kind of frankensteiny looking under there and here too all the spots that had to be done uh same thing here uh as that one i'm going to i got the piece ordered and the brace in the back to cut these off this is just way way too flimsy too rusty to repair where the other places on here, I could cut out anything that was rusted and put a patch in. It's kind of funny how this thing uh, uh, rusted. But this is the piece, the lower valance. It came in the Janet kit. You got to cut this out for your light. I think I can hold, hold this and show you. This goes here. Of course, it's upside down, but... And then the nose cone goes on but um once i get this done there's there's no holes drilled but there are places like little notches that i believe is where they want the holes so i will drill out and into here the new metal and have plenty of holes to bring this down and, and bolt it up and that should should look really nice of course, all this, this is dura glass. I wanted to put a first layer dura glass sand down, and then for any of the finishing work, I'll use, you know, a skim coat of uh, the feather light uh, Bondo type. But this is how the black fender over there looked originally. Uh, this was in a lot better shape. I don't have all the rust throughout it. It's uh, it's good shape. So I'm going to weld that. And I'm also going to come over here and weld the the guy was like say changing this over to a 68 and or he ordered it by mistake but he he got the 68 fender which 
has the little circle. So got one bent piece of metal. I'm gonna gonna weld that as well. But uh, all set up. Gonna get it welded. Okay. As you can see, we've got all this spotted in, and all the plugs that I drilled or holes I filled in a couple places here and there and around. Um, I looked underneath and it looks like it had, well, if you need a light, you can see it had some uh, good penetration under there as far as uh, getting through the new metal. So basically, since this has a cut here, from having to make the modification, it, it weakened this to where it, you know, it could pivot in. So I put another strip, like I say, of metal. And I mean, you can get this about anywhere. Good gauge. And uh, just cut it off and uh, put it underneath for the strength. You can see this where we cut it off, got down into this part which really made that weak so now it's all one piece again and it's the same same over here I put the metal the metal underneath now you, I guess you can see it but um, just for the strength over here I did the same thing had the magnets and I still got to put some more in it I just I just kind of went around and tacked it so I'll finish that out grind it off and You'll never know that it was even there so trying to figure out some dimensions here and other things i need to do to these two fenders that are 70 chargers uh, i've just put them on the 69 body and i already noticed there's some things i need to do i uh, looked through all the instructions and it doesn't really talk about uh, the other mods to the fender besides what i just filmed and and uh, filling in the the marker light cutting it off and folding folding it under which I'm going to sand all this but anyway I put this on the car the back bolt here which everybody knows that's that's where you start to hang it of course body lines are bad and everything right now but just to see how this is going to line up and I noticed this won't go all the way down because this this is sticking up and I believe you don't need any of this bracket out here for the light because you've got your own separate light in the nose cone and uh, of course the other one's the same way I'm gonna have to cut this off and I still got some more work to do on this and there's some there's some rust back there in the back but um, not sure that the way this flange is here uh, it's not the same on a, a 69 fender, uh, turns, it's angled and bolts up with this, you know, core support. And of course it doesn't have any of that flange or anything like that. But, uh, I need to, I guess, do some cutting, taking these things off and mock, do some more mock up and, uh, just wanted to show that uh, that's another modification that has to be done to these fenders. So, like I said, I ended up putting a strip of metal that I cut and welded on this one and this one. Oh boy, a little present. Anyway, uh, cut it and then drilled holes, plug plug welded it, kind of like spot welding. And I'm gonna sam I'm gonna sandblast all this to get this surface rust off but uh that's make this a lot stronger so you don't have a weak uh original fender connection to the lower valance and obviously i can't put the lower valance on because it's on the uh, rotisserie but uh it's easy to take the rotisserie off uh with some pump up tables put underneath when i'm when i'm to that point so i guess i'll start cutting i may put this on time lapse and uh Get the fenders off, put it on the table, maybe do some cutting. But anyway, uh, that's the project today. Before I start doing any finishing work on these fenders, I still need more cutting. 
sandblast and things like that that I need to do. So stay tuned. I'm working on the second fender for the Daytona, which is already got a lot of patches in it where I've cut out the metal and welded weak areas. Like I say, I'm waiting on the part for this to replace this whole part, includes the back part. Didn't really realize it, but this here, I just cut it. This, you can see the, the rust. It's underneath it. This edge is good. This back edge is good. So I will cut a piece to put in there. But I'm gonna bring this up and cut this off. And then fabricate a piece and weld it all in there. I did that already on the, uh, the other one. It had a lot smaller one. Um, this is all Duraglass in there. I'll be grinding, grinding it off flat. Got a little weld I need to do there. And uh, that'll take care of that one. But uh, it's looking good. All these welds, I think they're gonna be fine. But welded all that in. Uh, this had the strip on the back side. This strip here is uh, a new one that creates the strength for that. So that's just some of the mods. I did have to cut this out, which I may have already addressed that. And then there was a tab that stuck out here. It was blocking it from sitting on the car correctly. So anyway, uh, I just wanted to show this piece that I'm cutting out. And I may time lapse it and, and weld it in there. Okay, yeah, we ground off, sanded all this. This needs to be beat on and uh, sand more of the filler out. Sand that out. Yeah. It's got a... I think it has a natural dent. I think it does too. That, that it's maybe on my fender too. I think it's got kind of a fall off point. But I don't know what the 70. It's just that transition right there. You can feel yours? Kind of it just starts to slope down, but there's no there's no ridge in it. Yeah. But yeah, there for where you were and yeah, it's a ridge. replacing yeah. all of them. Be you put a lot of metal pieces in this that, Yeah, this has got a you can't get to the back of this to beat it out, so we'll grind that out and use your little solder thing and poom, poom, pull that up. Yeah, gotcha. Yep, sounds good. And yeah, there's, there's a big cave there too. This, yeah, I don't know. This, this may the end may need to come up a little because I know you put a huge piece in here. But yeah, I'd I'd say let's hammer and dolly. Yeah, a lot of this. That's and a this, big ridge there. This is there. what I did today. Weld it in. There's the piece I took out. So you just put a and that piece was, of metal in there. And that was laying there. So yeah, that was all new metal. Probably need to still put some more weld, but I wanted to grind some of that out. Yeah. So I can see where I was, because it was all blobby and... Yeah. Yeah, the, the welder just kind of whistles and pops and... You can't weld rust. No, it wasn't. This was on the new metal. It just, it would just beat up. It worked okay, it just... It wasn't like it was and just perfect. It would it would uh, it would whistle and and glow like I was putting a bead of liquid, and then and then it would be all right, and then it would do fine for a while. That sounds weird. I've never seen my welder do that. Well, we'll have to try it. I make sure I turn. Yeah, I turned it off. Oh, okay. I was thinking maybe I don't have the gas on. If you don't have the gas on it, just kind of like like static on it. Okay, I got my two uprights, and I labeled these front right hand. So this is trunk. So 
this will go inside the trunk. This part you'll see, and all that under there you'll see. Is that the trunk gutter? If that's the front. So that sits up under the truck trunk gutter? Yeah, on the driver's side. Oh, no, 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 that's not. That's yeah, it does. the right. So that is that's... that side. So this is the gutter then. Yeah, that is the gutter. Yes. Gotcha. But uh, it had these little dimples that had like coned to where you that's where you put your drill bit it's right in the center but you can see i had to elongate that one that one had to go that way and those were pretty good these are they're set the way they're set <laughs> so yeah you're not moving those <laughs> yeah. but i got it to where what did i do i think you're going backwards i'm going backwards there we go but now it, it fits just fine so that is under the quarter yep. in the back. That's the shelf support. S shelf support. And then this piece, this bolts to the trunk. Trunk floor goes through trunk the floor. floor. And this goes to uh, number one. Or no, number three, two, and I'm four. Around you. Let's look yeah, right. see, see this will be in the trunk. So it's got two holes. Pretty nice little setup. Already comes this way from Janik. That goes in number two. And see, it, it won't reach number four. Yeah, so you got to customize the customizable kit, huh? So, see how that spreads out? Yeah. See, that needs more of that cut off. It's not cut right. Oh, uh, I see. They, they come pre-cut, like, or pre-angled. But there's not enough of it out. If there were more out, that would spread out well, more. Well, you can see, look. The, the plane level, this is going yeah, down. That's it gotta, needs to be out to be more yeah. level. Right. I don't know if I film that. Pull it back up. I was I was watching it, oh. but you can see this is angled down and that. If that, that needs to go that way yeah. in order to be flat across there. And then those will... Yeah, see that one's flat and that one's too angled. Yeah, I see. You, you're right. It needs to go out another inch or so. Right. So shaving that little triangle out, it looked like this had some room that that is... That hits too. Yeah, so both sides. You got it marked right. Just shave a little bit both, out. And... Both sides. So I'll take that off and grind it out. Yeah. That'll, that'll take care of that. And it also says when you put that underneath, you uh, put panel bond. Oh, well panel bond both, that. As well as Panel bond that to the underside of the cord. said that'll keep it from possibly making noise and squeaking in your trunk. Well, you told me on the phone today that. You were watching a bunch of stuff. Oh, you were reading or watching a bunch of stuff, and yeah, they said tell us tell a story about the Daytonas and how the artisans. There's how that looks. Oh yeah, it even looks wider in the picture. It's underneath there, and the different holes, and then mm -hmm. bolts to the floor. Yeah, it said uh, uh, Janik posted that if on your nose cone. There's no no cone, even when they were doing them from the factory to make the 500 of them, that they had to work them all by hand. <laughs> and to don't get discouraged, take your time, you know, reevaluate. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to learn some. Nothing some is bolt on. <laughs> Nothing's bolt on because all the cars are different. Yeah, that's that's what I was like. Yeah, I expect this stuff, but tell the story about your Shelby quarter. Oh, yeah, the two, we may even two, have a video on that. I don't know if we were filming when we were doing that car. It had the trunk deck with the built-in spoiler, fiberglass, and then the rear extensions that go bolt on the end of the quarter. They weren't even close. I mean, the roundness of them, meeting up with the body. I think we ended up <laughs> using almost a whole thing of Bondo, it seemed like, to build well, the, it up. We did, what did we do? The fiber fill, like fiberglass first? Yeah, and, and then, then grind them off. I mean, we rebuild them basically even the bolts weren't right on the inside and i forget where we got them but it all had to be redone even this it's like you know it didn't line up perfect have to redo this that's pretty darn close though yeah it was real close this one the shelby's the, they they didn't mirror each other that was the thing is they took the molds from a true shelby that yep. they molded them to that specific car and yeah. every car's a little different so that the guy was like no, they're molded from a real Shelby. Well, that Shelby's not the one we're That's building. Right. This one went to the left. This one came straight down. 
I see they're this just, one went up. They're just wilder a little bit, but hell, you're going to have giant washers. Yeah, but and this one was just, I mean, really fit good when I got done with it. Yeah, it looks good. So, but that, and happen to redo these, they'll be ready. And then I'm going to, you know, wipe these all down real good. Once they're perfect, we dry fit everything, powder coat these. Not and, paint? Uh, you don't want to paint all those individual Yeah, I'm going to powder coat them black because the car is going to be yellow. Uh, so you look in the trunk, you're going to see yellow trunk and then those black parts? Yeah, black. black I mean, parts. we can do either one that you want. I mean, it's just a matter of yep. pulling all the hardware off of them and well, prepping them. We... Etch primer, right. primer, sand, all of that. Where if we cleaned them and threw them in the powder coating oven, they'd be flat black forever. Or gloss black if that's... What, what color black is going on this? Gloss. Gloss? Yeah. Well, we could... Much. I mean, I got gloss over there. Yeah, we'll use it. If you wanted to gloss them up, we could. We'll gloss those up. We'll just gloss over it. <laughs> yeah, it was good getting the parts down out of the boxes. Yeah, and so. Had to, had to get the nose out. We'll see a wing and a nose here before long. Yeah, the wing's up there. I didn't get it down because I don't need it yet. And I guess these are for. Well, tell how, how you're supposed to mount it once you get all the stuff mocked in. Everything's painted. Yeah, you put it together. Your wing, what do you do? Said said get three people and lift it up as one piece set it on there because you don't want to be tweaking and cracking don't over tighten the bolts if you start here and cracking you don't use a torque wrench on them mm -hmm. you'll it'll crack of course that ain't going to be till the car's painted and <laughs> right. you're putting them on for the last time but for all this mock-up um you don't even have to have the cross piece i think as long as this stuff all goes in there good yep this i will paint paint yellow Oh, up in the body because it's going to be panel bonded where it's yeah, supposed to Yeah, go. you got it says to use some, uh, like a wire wheel and clean these all off real good. Yeah, they look all caked and Yeah, they say that there's some stuff. preservative or something on them and, and fiberglass release or something. So you got to clean the threads out and tell you what, what to use to clean the threads, you yep. know, to tap and dye it. So, okay. yeah, I found all, all kinds of bolts and washers that I had. Well, all those pieces came and nothing was labeled, so... Yeah, well, this didn't... None of it comes with bolts. You gotta, you gotta furnish your own bolts. Oh, did you, you did all the hardware, huh? Yeah, had gotcha. all those. All right, well, it looks heavy-duty and nice and yep. delicious and it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be cool. But I think I, think I liked hearing... First. I think I liked hearing you say earlier today on the phone that all of the guys were artisans. They were all yeah body working guys that made everything fit yeah back in 69 <laughs> yeah but they said it still it was a lot of hacking and cutting and doing it on the floor for all, for all the units yep because they you know they robbed the 70 fenders for pre-production i think is what they said and what did you say about why they used 70 fenders instead of the 69s they were, they were longer because these were more snub nosed and came down yeah and it affected the wind in the wind tunnel testing or whatever they could get more speed and it worked better using the 70 and then putting the nose on it i guess the nose it was too blunt on on that one i yeah. guess but yeah this is i think i've already fit this on that one this fits real nice on there with the new metal. Oh, you've laid it across to I've laid it across. See it how that good. lays on the top of that thing. Yeah. But there's still so much work. Still waiting to get get these in, cut these off. We're gonna get those in Moultrie then? No, Brian ha has them. Are we gonna get it from him in Moultrie? Yeah, he has them, yeah. Okay. Moultrie's coming up before you know it. Yeah. Two or three weeks maybe. Yep. So all right, that all you wanted to show? That's or... it. Okay. Oh the show where did you already show in the video? I don't know if you filmed the cut out you yeah, had to do I on the fenders how we had to modify that's and i even posted on the uh arrow wing car uh facebook page that hey roll it if up anybody so had pictures it. of what they did because so you all this section that piece and then there was a piece that stuck out too because it wouldn't go down on the car i haven't tried these yet but that should take care of it yeah it looked like that had a place to go I was thinking maybe these two prominent bolt holes here. It may. Mine mine actually bolt in right. through here. Right. But even I I had to customize mine to get mine to fit too. Right. So um that's just you're building a 
You're building a car that was a custom car when it was built. <laughs> but nowhere in the Janik booklet says anything about doing this modification or cutting off the lights, the buckets. And you cut off your buckets. But C69, your buckets, yeah, your fender, any. you don't have any of that because it's all in the grill. Yep. But these are, they're welded in there. <laughs> I mean, I had Yeah, to, so how is that on there? That, that, well, it's still got the... I mean, it was on there. There it is. Well, yeah, you can see. see. And I'm going to grind those down more. But yeah, those, they have to be cut off. Yep. I don't know if they'll interfere. People may say, oh, you just what? leave those on there and your lights are way out here. They don't interfere at all. Why well, oh. cut them off? Weight savings. But they're cut <laughs> off on mine anyway. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Cool. Well, that's a lot of good info. Yep. All right. Anything else tonight? That's it. All right. All Thanks, right. Bye -bye. everybody, for watching. Bye-bye. Hi. Welcome. Clark's Place again. Today, I want to show you a couple of things on the wing for the Daytona. And kind of some of the stuff that's involved in what you have to do. Anyway, I have my two uprights. They're not mounted. They're sitting in their holes. But what I wanted to show was that, take this off. These bolts, I should have filmed them first. Uh, they've got like Teflon tape all wrapped around and some sort of coating, you know, on them to protect them. And I understand that. And it says in the instructions to take a wire wheel, take it off, which I did. Had to use a razor blade and and kind of chip away at some of the stuff at the bottom. But what I wanted to show you was you take the pattern and you lay it on your your quarter panel, you mark it, drill your holes. And if you look at this straight on, these are not all coming out of here exactly straight. That one kind of angles, that angles. Uh that one's kind of kind of coming this way. At any rate, uh use the pattern and then laid this over the top of it, which looked pretty, uh, you know, pretty close. Stood it up to where the bolt are, or the uh, studs are sticking down kind of on my dots. And my I colored it black. And But then when you put it in there, it'll go down almost all the way down. But you're, you're splayed. So as it goes down, it doesn't want to, doesn't want to sit flush on the uh, quarter panel. So you can see this one had to be drilled out and I had to use a, like a reamer and uh, grind away the back. This one was pretty good. This one had to come this way a little bit and this one was good. But just to give you a heads up, uh, that's the way it goes. You can see it's not that big of a hole. Uh, that's no big deal, but just that you're probably gonna have to do that. Um, we'll go around the other side, I think. The other side is probably a little bit worse. Let me take it off here. Sorry, I can't do it one-handed. They are just way too heavy. What's there? They are built really nice. Um, this one, you can see, I guess had to come this way. This one had to go that way a little bit. And that one had to change. I think I marked it. Had to come this way a little bit. And this one was, was pretty good. So that uh, is just something to be aware of. Uh, the other thing, which in putting together, I think I filmed a little bit earlier in this video, which I ended up marking these as to where they go. Just so I don't have to keep picking them up and, okay, which... Which one's this? Figured it out. Uh, these, I ground off. This did not want to open up enough for the spread to go on the uh, underside of the wing stanchions. Uh, it mounts in two of the holes, but it would not open up because it was hitting. So I took those off and ground them off. Which, you know, if yours is cut a little different, it might it might fit fine. I also, while I did that, took the drill bit. 
I think it's a three eighths and went through this and the other top and all the sides anywhere where bolts go through uh, because this was, I, I could not hardly get these bolts in there. Sorry. Um, they just, they just did not want to go through. So it needed just, just a touch. Um, so that's something you might want to remember too, is just to, to do that. So, so the bolts, bolts slide in and out a lot easier. So with that, that's just, uh, kind of what I've been doing today. Doing a little things. Of course, I'm not anywhere close to mounting anything on this car, but I want to get all the holes drilled. I want to get the um, exposed areas that need primer and need paint. Uh, I don't want them to be, I don't want to be drilling into a painted car and think, oh, forgot to drill the holes out. Obviously, I wouldn't do it for this, but also once we get this mocked up, I'm going to have to drill uh, two holes for this bracket uh, that goes through the floor. And it, they've got, you know, there's a lot of adjustment here, so um that'll go through hopefully if it goes through like i think it's going to be outside the gas tank uh, this is the challenger but i'm thinking it's it's going to be you know somewhere maybe even on this side of the frame rail uh, hopefully don't know yet not because i've never done one of these before but uh at any rate there is the there's the uh, reaming tool, or I don't know if I'm even saying that right, if it's actually a reaming tool or not, but anyway, got a whole set here that uh, Chris bought, and uh, they work very, very well. Anyway, um, that should do it for this uh, segment, and look forward to showing more and more as I do. Got to a point here I wanted to uh, at least put on camera of uh, what I've been doing. Um, got the two uprights here and the big Allen bolt that actually goes through the adjustment, um, for the wing, the pitch of the, uh, the cross piece. And I just wanted to show the pins have been, this is, um, I guess the guide pins to keep it stable and it rests in here. To where it won't it won't twist around or anything like that if you put a couple kind of like dowel pins which is fine and looking in the instructions it shows drilling through this well on this one i haven't done anything yet it's a, a fiberglass bump which i guess is something that has to be drilled out sorry um, there's a plug on that side as well which I picked it out of the other one and started drilling a little bit and I can see that it looks like it might be metal but um, that's fine it looks like that's what it's kind of showing in the picture it doesn't say what size or anything like that and the same with here this is uh, this was all very full of of all kinds of stuff. <laughs> so um, just fiberglass. You can see that it is threads in there. Maybe you can't. But um, process for elimination. I found a from the tap and die set something that fits. I tried scraping out with uh, tools. And just going to end up tearing the threads up. And this did not want to start, but it looks like it's starting now. But I'm going to run run this tap all the way through. And um, I think the other end, I'll show you what it looks like. I mean, just be prepared that you're going to have to do some work. Okay. Yeah, see that? That does not fit at all. And I uh, don't want to booger the threads up. I mean, it's close, but this will this will go in there and you can hear it crunching. 
And you know, when they when they made this, I guess it it uh, has a little bit of slag or run over in their mold. It gets down into threads. So I imagine that's all it. But I'm gonna play with this and get it cleaned out to where it'll take a take a bolt or um, the Allen bolt that they sent me, and then I'm gonna drill these two out and should be able to assemble it and um, go from there so just more things that uh, uh, is not real clear uh, the tether is very clear what they say as far as running through this hole and then down uh, through here you know if you want to run a cable a wire cable and down to the floor of the trunk uh, NASCAR required that so they don't go flying off and uh, hurting somebody and it says you can do that if you want to be more like how it was from NASCAR. But uh, I don't know if I'll do that or not. We'll see if I've got some cable I can run through there. It's a pretty small hole. But uh, it'll come down and, and, of course, just come out of the out of the bottom. And you'll probably have to drill another separate hole uh, in the quarter panel, the top of it. So, yeah, these all cleaned up. Went in there fine. One thing I had to do which I forgot is this this went on just fine on these but I had to put it up underneath line up the holes and mark them and you see I had to if you want to say waller these out a little bit but I had to elongate those just slightly at least two of them so this snugged up and fit up underneath the uh, quarter uh, correctly it's like a slot it almost kind of goes into place and then you can move it back and forth but that part's done and I'll be putting it together here soon so until next time Clark's place bye bye wanted to do a quick up update on working the um, the wing on the back of the uh, Daytona worked and worked on it took a while to figure out get a light here figure out these braces I have a mark down it Seems like they come at an angle, but then this piece down here, it has a uh, adjustment to it. So that makes it to where it'll go down right. The other angle, if I put this, if I put this one on the left side, it hits, it hits way back in here, and it's almost off the side. So I don't think they mount them that close. So this will be bolted. Um, they wouldn't have this bracket that was adjustable if they were intending to go over there because it's straight up and down. You can barely get this upright piece, the, uh, the part that goes straight up and down, just would not go in there right. But I have it in. We have the, uh, I forget what they call that. It's, it's like the, uh, the big washer <laughs> underneath or the backing of the actual wing. Now, I don't have it all tightened down or anything. This is a dry fit. Uh, I think I showed on there all the prep that had to be done on the bolt, or on the uh, studs, and drilling this out up here uh, a little earlier. Uh, the only thing I got left to do is put uh, the dowel pins in so you can assemble it. but. There was enough. I put one side on and took the car and of course tilted it down. Got it all hooked up. 
and then went to the other side and you can pull push and pull and it was I mean there wasn't any cracking or anything and it popped right down in and it put the bolt in so like I say this is just for a dry fit uh, for planning purposes make sure I've got everything I'll I'll drill out those holes for I did put some marks I think but drill those holes out and I think I'm gonna take this bracket and flat flatten it out a little more so it sits flat on the trunk floor so but yeah I got a lot a lot of cleanup to do still have to replace the uh, reflector over there the housing if I want to cut that off because uh, the guy put a 68 fender on as you can see it's got the little button hole up there that a reflector hole a round one this one was fine with the uh, with the square anyway uh, that's what I've been doing I've been putting a little dirt glass little bondo here and there just as I run out for other work I'm doing and I guess I'll get busy working on these fenders I think I'm gonna take them outside sandblast them so I've got uh, all this surface rust to try to get to especially on the uh, green one over there and uh, while I'm doing it I'll, I'll also do the hood the hood is very very nice uh, a lot of this is uh, black tar stuff on there but you can see there's a couple weak spots there's one peeled up this is weak probably cut this out probably cut this out work with it uh, don't like that that's so weak there but yeah I'll cut it out and we'll we'll fix it I mean where are you gonna find a 70 hood that's the problem and the important part not that the underneath isn't important this is uh, excellent excellent there's no rust through even on the sides all that's perfect it's just this this thinner structure underneath that needs work which that's totally doable and uh, I'm sure that'll be another video so anyway uh, have a good day thank you bye bye